Welcome to Tasting Wine. I'm Haley. I'm Toth. Today we're tasting wine. We're trying Whole Roger Reserve Brut Champagne. We might need to like rename the show Tasting Champagne. Just huh? Tasting Champagne. Because <laughs> that's like all we do is drink champagne. So we actually decided to try the Paul Roger because it was recommended from someone out there in the YouTube universe. Someone who watches our show apparently. Yes, it was recommended by Perth Luxury. So oh. thank you, Perth. Yeah, we shall see. We're gonna I, try. Everything I've read about it, it seems like it's pretty high up there with uh, you know standards and age and things that they do to it. So wow! Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, look at the bubbles here. They're so tiny. Wow. There's so many. Oh, I have way more. Oh, than what you. the heck? Yeah, see that? <laughs> That's not fair. That's a race in here. This is nice. This is like really nice, smooth, kind of vanilla yeah. bean. And like butter, though, too. Yeah, you get some butter. Butter, maybe like a slight creaminess. Oh, this is. This is really nice. This, lemon. this, I would say, on the nose is like classic champagne. Oh yeah, this is this great. Is, this is classic champagne. And then maybe a little bit of lemon in there too. Some uh, lemon acidity or something like that. You're gonna like this one. I feel like this is more your style of champagne for sure. Yeah. I really, uh, no, you're right. I do like it. <laughs> I do like uh, it because it says yeah. champagne on the bottle. So basically <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, I feel like it's really good. It's not as creamy and brioche, bri brioche as I brioche? think. Uh, you thought I might want it to be, if that makes any sense. Yeah, sure. But it's, I gotta try it again because it's. I don't, it's super creamy for me. Okay, yours. We've been having that weird glass mix up thing where one glass tastes different than the other. Let us see. No. You can't have enough okay. one. Well, Let's I guess get... not today. <laughs> no, this has an insanely long finish though. Mm -hmm. And it's lemon and it's almost like tart lemon cake. Instead, cake. Yeah, yeah sure. you know, like the cake is kind of like that that toasty brioche creaminess, you know, it's not like the like a, the toasty creamy brioche in it. It's more like lemon cake. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's pretty solid. I really like it. I mean, uh, it's bubbles. They're super fun. I mean, I know that they have four miles of underground caves. They do. Which is crazy. They have two levels of them. And one of them is like a, a degree lower than the other one. The lower one is obviously a little bit colder. And they like uh, do the second fermentation down there in those cellars because it happens even slower just because of that extra degree change, which is pretty fascinating. I think it's pretty cool. This has also developed like a really nice kind of hazelnut sort of smell on the nose. And I think that mm. it's kind of starting to come through on the taste. Yeah, it has a nuttiness to it. Yeah, I think that this is gonna be a second glass banger. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, this this one's only gonna get better as, as it goes on. I think the temperature is perfect. Yeah, it's Probably about perfect. like 50 degrees. But it's really, uh, it's got that nice acidity. It's got those creamy flavors. It's got a little bit of the bread in there. I, I like where this is going. People have been comparing this to uh, Bollinger, like non-vintage Bollinger and saying mm -hmm. that they sometimes, like people prefer this over non-vintage Bollinger and for us we're like I mean, shit. Bo yeah, Bollinger, <laughs> I mean they're the same price so there's that um but we love Bollinger but, but yeah we love Bollinger Bollinger is one of our favorite non-vintages but a lot of things I read that said is that people love this as their favorite non-vintage which I could see it giving Bollinger a run for its money we'll just have to do a side by side but this is this is super good side by side so because I don't know. I'm stuck. I'm stuck with Bollinger versus this. Mm -hmm. I think we need to wait and try the second glass and make our final decision. With, just, just with just Bollinger or just a second glass of this? Well, second glass is okay. Yeah, it yeah. Holds up. Because this is this is so good as is. I think it's only gonna get better, like like you say. So yeah, we'll, we'll come back on second glass. Okay. All right, second glass of Paul Roger here. I can see why this is up there with people's favorites. It's so so good. For the price, it's still a lot. It's still, you know, How much is it? 50 bucks a bottle. Okay, 50 bucks. 50 bucks, but like you're in champagne, it's already higher prices. And That's true. the minimum age on this is three years. So whatever wines they use from reserves are a minimum of three years old. You know, I don't think this has really changed that much on the smell. No, I it smells about the same. 
maybe a little bit more fruit. I was thinking kind of like grapefruity, um, but kind of just like a hint. It's, it's more like grapefruit cream. Yeah, and that hazelnut say. is kind of coming through more. Yeah, the hazelnut sure. is definitely coming through. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is it is such a pleasant drink with. It's got has subtle complexities. It's not it's not your vintage champagne that's gonna have like a lot of complexities, but it's still up there. Um, I'm just like being really picky, I guess, you know. Because if picky, I'm looking picky, picky, if picky. I'm looking for my favorite <laughs> non-vintage champagne, you know, I got a lot to say. That's true. But I mean they're they're old, so um Paul Roger, his first name was Paul, like P-O-L, last name is Roger. And he, his dad ended up having some sort of like incurable illness and he had to provide for his family when he was a teenager. So he actually sold his first bottle of wine at age 18. No way. Like yeah. was he a wine salesman? He, no, like he like made, so the, oh, he was he originally in, um, in I-A-Y, that region. And then they moved to that Epernay region. Okay. Um, so once he died, his two sons took over the business and then they actually petitioned to have their last name changed to Paul Roger rather than just Roger to like honor him. Oh, Isn't that cool. cool? That is cool. Yeah, so they've been like a, you know, family owned business ever since. What? I mean, it has, it has more, I would say acidity and lemon and crispness on the second glass here like it's definitely opened up i don't think it's changed too too much like it's pretty it's still about the same i would say Otherwise, yeah i think i have to take back kind of my prediction thinking that this was going to be a second glass banger it's still super good yeah i just thought that it was going to get maybe a little bit more complex um yeah one thing i will say for this being a non-vintage the bubbles are super super fine mm -hmm. and i read that's because they have this two uh for two level, uh, you know, cave cellar, and the second level is a lower temperature, so that actually helps create the slower uh, fermentation process or the secondary fermentation, and that's what makes those super super fine bubbles. Because for a non vintage, these things are super small and super tight, and you can taste okay. that. You know, they can kind of taste that. They they taste a little bit finer in your mouth. It's finer. <laughs> finer, yeah. Finer. <laughs> what else you got about Paul Roger? I love Paul Roger. This will be one that we will definitely have more of. I saw they have a Blancs de Blancs. Uh-huh, they do. And we have the Winston Churchill, which if yes. this is the reserve, I know the Winston Churchill, the 2009 is the one we have. Is it just going to blow us out of the water? Yeah, Winston Churchill be hitting friends with, I believe it's the granddaughter of Paul Roger, one of the sons, something like that. Became friends with her. And he, um, when he drank their champagne, he was like, oh my God, this is the best champagne ever. And kind of, you know, really like elevated them as a champagne it, house. It was his favorite champagne brand. It was. Brand so in yeah. 1975, they created their first Winston Chin 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 Where's your Chin Chin? Oh my God, I'm swearing words. Winston, Winston. Did you sneak another glass? What is going on? I'm like, oh my God. Not Say it with me, Winston, Winston Churchill. Churchill. <laughs> Cute. A. How cool is that? <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you for joining us here in Tasty One. You're at Paul Roger. This was a recommendation. So, if you got any other fabulous recommendations for non-vintage champagnes, let us know because you know we obviously love a champagne. Yeah, love but make it. sure you get out there and taste some wine. Let us know what you're trying. Try something new. All those things. Let us know what to try next. Yeah, let us know what you should try next. You can follow us on Instagram. Our handle is Tasting Wine Official. And we will see you on the next Let's one. See you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers.